All right, so we come to the place where we have enough tools to graph a rational expression. So I laid out a strategy for us, and I'll use an example to help us understand what all these aspects are. Now remember, we've already built the tools to do each one of these steps. So we have a large problem. How do we solve a large problem? Little problems. And if we solve enough little problems, we get to go home. So how do we begin? So let's come up with some function. Step one is we want to see if there's any symmetry involved. Remember how to do that? We evaluate the function at negative x. And compare our result with the initial. And it does not produce the original function, nor does it produce so I, let's say this, f of negative x does not produce f of x, nor did it produce a negative f of x. Remember symmetry. So step one, there's no symmetry. Step two, look for its y-intercept. Where does it cross the y-axis at? There we can determine by evaluating the function at zero. All right, so we found something. We found that it crosses the y-intercept at one. Hold on to that piece of information. Step three, look for its x-intercepts, the solutions to this particular equation, and we find that out by looking at um, the, the function, the, yeah, the polynomial function in the numerator, which is two of x, or two x minus one. So evaluate that at zero. No, where that equals zero, sorry. So 2x minus 1 equals 0. That's true. x equals 1 half. All right, hold on to that piece of information. Vertical asymptotes. How do we determine its vertical asymptotes? Well, we determine by looking at the denominator. The denominator is x minus 1. We first factor out any common factors with the numerator. There are none. So based on x minus 1, that tells me I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Next, we have horizontal asymptotes. How did we determine? Well, we looked at the ratio. Well, we looked at the, the, the exponent or the highest exponent in the numerator related to the highest exponent, the denominator. Here, they're both ones, which means they match. So then we take the ratio of their coefficients, which is two over one, which equals two. That tells me now that I have a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals two. All right, let's just recap a little bit what we've done here. So the first thing we did is that we tested for symmetry. Second thing we did is we looked for its y-intercepts, then its x-intercepts, then a vertical asymptote, and then a horizontal asymptote. And then from there, we're gonna just test some plots, test some points. So where do we wanna graph this one at? So let's graph. And let's put in what we know so far. I know um, I have no symmetry. Uh, f of zero is so x equals zero. I have a y-intercept at one. So I have one point there. The next one told me I have an x-intercept at one half. So my graph crosses at one half. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals one. There's one, so there's some type of vertical asymptote right about there. Sorry, it's supposed to be straight. And I have a horizontal asymptote at line y equals two. I know my graph does not cross these vertical asymptotes, 
So as I'm looking at this, I know this graph has to follow on that side. No other way to connect those dots that were if it were above. What happens on the right side? Uh, it might be a good idea to do a test point and just to see what happens. So if I have a point, say um, two, let's try two. Definitely over on the other side. This helps to know if the graph is going to be above or below. So if I plug in two, and how do I want to do this here? F of two equals two times two minus one over two minus one. That equals four minus one is a three. That's three. So at the point x equals two, my value is up here at three. So I know that I have this portion up here, which is where my graph will be at. And by using the nature of the asymptotes, I know that it has to fit in that particular spot. It can't be down here because my value is above. And then it has two asymptotes that the graph is being pinched up against. And so that's how you plot some points just to get a sense of where is the remaining place um, places at. And if you understand the nature of asymptotes, then you can just plug the graph in there. Um, so I did test plots. I checked a couple of points and now I graphed it. I made a nice little smooth graph. And there I were, there I am able to graph f of x equals 2x minus 1 over x minus 1. Looks complicated at first. It will be complicated the first three or four or five times you do it on your own, but you will be able to do it on your own.